you. Let's bring in Cantor Fitzgerald, Sarah James. Sarah, great to have you with us. Um, you know, they, they basically said the medical loss ratio, MLR, will come in higher than what they had been forecasting, but they kept the EPS guide the same. So how should investors interpret this? Yeah, you know, United's a company with a lot of different levers. They're crushing it at vertical integration and through their Optum segment, they've been driving consistent earnings speeds. So I think that you look at this as maybe going to the high end of MLR is 6% EPS pressure, but they've got a lot of other levers with overhead with Optum to beat it. And it's almost like you have to look at what they're not saying, not just what they are. So they're not moving EPS guide, they're moving MLR guide. And I think that's really telling about the confidence they have in the rest of the business. So this is just sort of a fleeting thing for this quarter, for the next quarter? That depends, because there's a question of pent up demand. You know, during the pandemic, the first year, there was about 5 to 10% less procedures than normal. Second year, 2 to 5. So where did all of that go? Did people go to PT? Did they decide, you know, surgery is not for me? Or are they coming back into the market now? And I think that's where the big debate is, is are they coming back and to what degree and when? Um, and it's interesting because you see their peers out there, Humana and Elevans, recently reiterating guidance, um, saying that they're not seeing uh, the same level of utilization pressure or cost pressure. Um, so it certainly is a debate. Sarah, in the fall of 2019, UNH traded down to like a 11 and a half, 12 forward multiple. We talked about it being ridiculously cheap. Currently, it's about 15. I think it's cheap here, but does it have further room to the downside? Or is this level, I think it's 455 or so, is this an opportunity? Yeah, you don't often get a high quality company like this trading at a discount in the bargain bin, um, especially for something that can be transitory like medical costs. Um, but you also have to realize we're going into an election cycle. Typically in election years, multiples will compress um, a turn or two uh, about a year and a half ahead of the election. So we have to be cognizant of any sector rotation risk. But really, this is a company who's growing um, low to mid-teens EPS, great management team, strong balance sheet, trading at a significant discount today. So it looks like a great opportunity to us. So based on what uh, UNH CFO said, Sarah, the device makers went higher. Because they're still trying to figure out if people have actually um, said no to surgery for good or they're actually going to do the surgery at this point, are the gains that we saw today in the device makers, are those sustainable in your view or is there still some uncertainty here? There's still some uncertainty of how many people are actually going to go through with the surgeries that put them off. Um, we have pretty consistent commentary from surgery centers throughout the pandemic that there was no pent-up demand, that people were rebooking within the same quarter. And this is a new and conflicting data point. So when I think about who could win here, I think about companies that have more of an underlying trend, like the shift from inpatient to outpatient because you save 25%, and that's someone like a surgery partners or a tenant. Uh, especially Tenet, because they set guidance expectations for the second quarter so well. Uh, so those are great ways to play this sort of trend.